Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Great Engine Game series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we are taking a, a further look at the CCC 21 Blitz Challenger match between Leela and Torch. And we have a great game here. Leela White against Torch as Black. Let's have a look how it went. So the opening, D4, D6, specified by um, uh, uh, chess.com and... Uh, yeah, this um, uh, is actually quite an unpleasant little way of uh, of dealing with the uh, the Leningrad Dutch. Um, so, what White actually does here after knight c3, knight f6, plays bishop g5, attacking the uh, the knight on f6, knight d7, and then queen c2, hitting the pawn on f5, and after g6, then e4. It's uh, quite a well-known um, move order to, um, uh, yeah, just to try and um, and make sure that you get e4 in very quickly against uh, f5. So normally the point of the Dutch defence for black is to uh, to stop white from achieving e4, grabbing uh, space in the centre. And um, well, this is a very specific uh, concrete move order in order to achieve that. I've always, you know, had my slight doubts about it as white um, because uh, I always found. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it maybe doesn't mean anything to you, but I always found that resulting position a little bit uh, broad, expanded for white. Um, and um, yeah, I always uh, felt like I was going to get checked or hit with something uh, uh, in some place, you know. But um, that's not. Uh, that's just a, a personal view. Uh, the theoretical uh, opinion of this line is very good for um, for white, which is why uh, the engines get it as white in uh, these championships. So bishop g7, knight f3, c6. It's around here, I think, that the uh, that the book uh, ended. Um, yeah, if you give this to uh, to my engines, uh, Stockfish was actually quite keen on on just going bishop d3 in this position. Takes takes. Uh, d5. Uh, actually, this is one an example of one of those cunning little tricks. If you were to, it's not actually a, a pawn sacrifice because if you were to take it, then uh, queen a5 check uh, hits the two and wins a piece. But uh, Stockfish retreated with bishop d3, and after knight f8, now took off and played h4. In we go with uh, h4 to h5. Quite a nice uh, advantage for white, it must be said. Um, what Leela played was uh, knight g3, actually just um, avoiding this exchange and kind of, you know, keeping um, uh, the black pieces uh, rather bottled up in, uh, in their own position. Um, obviously, black's on the back three ranks, uh, lost any sort of pawn control black had over the centre, and uh, yeah, not necessarily easy to know where to develop if um, um, if no pieces get exchanged. So um, um, knight f8 was played here by uh, by Torch. Uh, Stockfish tried something else against uh, Dragon, which didn't turn out too badly. Played the move c5, bishop e2, takes takes, and then knight e5. I mean, in general, I'm I'm never very keen about these structures with black. I've tried them an awful lot because uh, you you know when, often uh, whenever you're trying to uh, to win a game. Um, uh, you know, playing an early f5 and uh, capturing a pawn on e4, it's a nice way of unbalancing the game. But somehow, um, yeah, with, with these two open files against these pawns, never really managed to get those going and uh, always, you know, felt a little bit uncomfortable. I actually scored a, a number of wins with this structure, but never quite felt comfortable about it. Um, and yeah, this does look quite, um, you know, quite pleasant for white. White's very solid here. Bishop comes back to c1, and um, we're just going to play the rooks to e1, bishop to f1, maybe play f4 at some stage. Should be a nice position, although, you know, Stockfish managed to draw this against uh, Komodo Dragon in, in my engine games. But um, what uh, Torch did was just play knight f8, and this is aiming to actually put the knight on e6, and then just play bishop d7, and actually maybe even castle queenside, could castle kingside as well. So Leela anticipates knight e6, plays bishop e3, Knight e6, and then h4 from Leela. We the move we know and love. So just aiming to play h4, and uh, well, it can be a little bit tricky as well because you know if a pawn disappears from here, then maybe the knight can come into f5 and attack the bishop on g7 as well. This knight on e6 is getting a bit in the way. So Torch played queen queen a5, check bishop d2, queen b6. Again, this was always the type of thing that made me a little bit. Well, nervous as white, but um, I sort of thought that black had little ways of disrupting the position because you were quite uh, open somehow. But uh, it doesn't actually uh, achieve that much. Bishop c3, bishop d7. And now, actually, this got quite uh, quite interesting in my engine games. Um, Leela just played castles, which is a very natural move. Uh, Stockfish in my engine games was playing queen d2, which kind of confused me a little bit. 
Um, but then I came across this game that it played against Dragon. So Knight G4 played by a Dragon. Quite an interesting idea here. Um, just sort of, uh, yeah, using the fact that you've gone H4 to get a Knight onto G4. Not too easy to chase away. Attacking that F2 pawn. And also opening up some lines and um, and also giving black maybe the idea of bishop h6. So, for example, yeah, if you castle, well, you'll have to watch out for bishop h6 ideas, just pinning the queen to the king. But um, bishop d3 was played by uh, Stockfish Castles. And now this very interesting idea, c5 takes and bishop c4, moving the bishop again, but pinning the, the knight to the king. So, yeah, you're looking for stuff like knight g5 as well, just uh, winning that knight. King h8, and then bishop a5. Bishop a5, there we are. Just uh, And all of a sudden, the black queen is trapped. Um, but it wasn't didn't quite end there, of course. This is an engine game, after all. So bishop h6 was played by dragon, counterattacking the queen. Knight g5, um, knight takes g5, bishop b6, and now knight e4. So um, only um, a piece for the queen so far for black. But, uh, well, some discovered attacks on the queen. We've got some uh, threats against here, and of course this one is hanging as well. So um, Stockfish decided that Queen H6 was the best line, and Bishop C5, and then takes takes Rook F4, and we had some sort of quiet uh, end game where White's a little bit better, but uh, it's nothing too stunning. Well, probably need to uh, analyse this position a little bit more to understand uh, was it really necessary to uh, to give up the um, uh, the Queen. Um, I guess that uh, the big problem is that um, uh, if you're playing, you know, moves like um, uh, like yeah, Queen E2, for example, we've got stuff like even like Bishop uh, D2 here, for example, and um, well, if you go King F1, then I've got uh, I don't know Knight checks and uh, stuff like that. But um, yeah, very uh, very unclear somehow, you know, just uh, um, but quite interesting anyway. That was uh, an idea, a cunning idea anyway of uh, Stockfishes, just. Uh, Queen d2 to try and trap this uh, black queen with bishop a5. Actually, uh, um, in most of the engine games after queen d2, black played the very safe queen c7, getting that queen safe, and then looked to play something like d5 afterwards. Well, Leela played castles, and after castles, now Leela played h5. So we're um, we're teeing up against the g6 pawn, queen and uh, h pawn uh, coming together. So rook g8 was played by... Um, um, by uh, Torch, just, um, well, yeah, uh, just dissuading White from taking twice on uh, on g6 there. There'll be some sort of uh, knight discovery and bishop discovery, you imagine. So um, bishop d3 was played by Leela, and now knight f4. Little counterattack there, so White was uh, putting some extra pressure on g6, and now this knight on f4. Um, attacking the bishop on d3, also defending g6, and also attacking g2. And here, um, Leela took a very interesting decision. I wasn't expecting that one at all, in actual fact. Um, was played a couple of times by um, by Stockfish and um, and Dragon in my engine games, but um, but really, you know, not that often. This is really, I think, a, a Leela special approach for uh, for this position. So Leela played the move h6. Now, I mean, you know, obviously talked a lot about um, the March of the Rooks pawn, installing a pawn on h6 and all that, but it's quite, I found it quite an unusual decision in this in this position because, you know, first of all, you know, you're not putting, making the bishop go passive to f8, it's coming to, to this quite active square where it's still looking across there. Of course, you know, the black king's on the other side, so it's not like you're restricting the, uh, the black king by playing h6. Um, yeah, and, you know, basically you're, you're giving up any opportunity you had to open the H file, which seemed like, you know, something kind of worthwhile to me. But uh, actually Leela's just, um, um, yeah, got some ideas about how this pawn will be useful in the future. One of them, of course, is, uh, you know, the fact that the H7 pawn is weak, so you, you will be able to attack it in, uh, in an endgame. Um, and the other point that Leela thinks is that uh, it's got rookie one, and uh, it's uh, threatening the pawn e7. So maybe you don't need the h file there. Particularly, you've got another file on which you can uh, you can put pressure. But it's definitely uh, an interesting decision. And uh, the what Torch actually plays in uh, in this position is really really interesting. Um, so nothing about uh, just defending this uh, e7 pawn passively. Torch goes on the counter attack here. It plays knight takes d3. Um, rook takes d3, and now this move knight h5. And what's the idea of knight h5? The idea is to uh, take on here and then play bishop f5 and pin the rook to the queen. Very interesting idea. 
And, um, well, Leela's response is just as interesting. Uh, basically, what Stockfish and Dragon were doing all the time in my engine games is Rook D E3. But then you take take and you go Bishop F6, and this looks quite reasonable to me, to be honest. Doesn't look at all uh, at all bad for Black. I think engines obviously still feel that White's got an advantage, but yeah, you know, Bishop protects uh, E7, covers G5. You doubled up some pawns here. Yeah, doesn't look too bad, does it? So what Leela plays was takes takes and then Rook E7. So a sharp exchange sacrifice. Um, Bishop F5 pins the uh, uh, the Rook to the Queen. Uh, also defends h7, so it stops your rook from going there. And now knight h4 from Leela takes takes. And this is, uh, yeah, pretty interesting uh, exchange sacrifice, I've got to say. I'm, I mean, to be honest, my assumption was that Leela was, uh, must be just winning this when, uh, when I saw this. After all, you know, we've got various ways of taking on h7, which will give a very nice pass pawn. And, um, yeah, this rook's on the seventh. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, we've got ways of getting the knight in. Um, so, you know, it really feels like um, uh, Black's under an awful lot of pressure here. But what um, Torch tries to do, tries to blast open the centre. And, uh, well, it's a good, a good spot somehow. Sorry, I'm uh, clicking wildly here. It's a good spot because uh, we've got Rook, Queen um, all converging onto uh, the D pawn. So if we play a move like D5 and then C5, you know, that... That really feels like you're making the most of this. And of course, you know, there's uh, this rook on g8, which is uh, eyeing the g2 pawn if this knight moves away. So, yeah, Torch uh, really making the most of uh, of all its activity playing d5 here. And, uh, well, what Leela does is quite interesting. I mean, c5 seemed natural to me. But, um, yeah, dragon against stockfish, this basically didn't look like uh, like anything for, um, for, uh, for white. I mean, those... Two rooks are pretty active. This knight is on the side. Um, and um, we're going to go maybe bishop f6, attack the knight. Yeah, uh, Stockfish was not having any problems drawing there. So Leela played the move queen e3 here. Um, so just uh, sidestepping and um, aiming for stuff like queen e6 as well. And what this move queen e3 is also doing is just ensuring that after c5, you could always have a move like d take c5. So you're not in the firing line anymore. Torch played d takes c4, and now knight f5. Um, so covering uh, the d4 square, you're not breaking through there. Um, rook takes g2 looks yeah, very reasonable, but uh, Leela thought nothing of it. Just thought rook takes h7 was very strong. And, uh, well, you can check, but then the king goes to c2. We're nice and solid around here. And then we've got ideas like, uh, you know, queen e6 coming in. Um, also ideas like rook h8 as well. So was just ending up very difficult for um, for black here. So what um, uh, Torch did was just play king b8, in principle looking to um, uh, to get the king out of the way, and then maybe you'll go c5 later. And now a quite extraordinary move from uh, from Leela. I've, you know, I, in, the, in all the, the writings I've done about uh, um, engines, I mean, that's, uh, that's two books. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Silicon Road to Chess Improvement and, uh, and Game Changer, of course. And I don't know how many um, um, reviews of uh, the TCC Super Finals, some of them edited by Mr. Beat in his own inimitable fashion. Um, but, um, I mean, I've written loads about engines, but I don't think I've ever <laughs> realised that one uh, idea of, uh, of having a, a rook on the H, uh, H6 square uh, would be that you could... Um, <laughs> Uh, put a knight on there and block a black rook. That's exactly what Leela did. Knight g7. Quite extraordinary, but uh, it's quite beautiful. I mean, it's really helping to restrict those um, those uh, uh, black rooks and also to bury the black bishop as well. So, kind of in one fell swoop, you're 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 really um, uh, cutting out about half of black's activity. Really, a very powerful idea. Now, Torch kept on going with c5, and um, well, d takes c5, queen c6. Um, we've got the rook active, right? So what Leela did in this position, again, it's very much a Leela special, neither uh, Stockfish nor Dragon did this, just played d5. And, um, well, after rook takes d5 here, obviously the rook is getting active on the d file, but somehow it feels like fewer files have been opened and that these black pawns are in the way. And of course, this rook is also in the way of a black queen if it gets to this diagonal. So, yeah. Pretty nice. Queen f4 check uh, played from uh, from Leela here. 
And now, again, a move I think only an engine would uh, would play. I mean, King A8 would be the only move that would ever really enter my head. But this is uh, very, very unpleasant because of knight E6. And we've got this massive threat of knight C7 check. And, well, God knows what <laughs> to follow. So um, the king has to return to C8, which is quite amazing. But, yeah, despite all the checks and everything, um, the, black, um, the black pieces are going to escape. Bishop B5. So pinning the black queen, it looks like queen f5 is going to be decisive. But now rook gd8 here. And this is one of those double purpose moves. I mean, after queen f5, we can just go rook d7 and uh, block that way. And yeah, basically the engines, uh, they're just not finding, they have, don't have enough power to, 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 to break through. Rook takes d7, takes queen check and queen f5 was the uh, main engine idea. Um, if after rook d7 you go bishop f4, maybe hoping for queen e5, then we start doing stuff like c3 and queen b5, and, well, we're going to have perpetual checks here. So um, uh, what Leela did was play the move rook c7, and now takes, takes, and rook d1, and rook d2 check. And it turns out that the white king cannot really escape here, because, uh, well, obviously, if you go back, I give checks, and um, if you go up to c3, I go rook check this way. And after king there, then rook d4 check will win the queen. So Leela had to take on d2, takes, takes, king c7. And this is, again, one of the most extraordinary ending positions I have ever seen. Um, you know, it's uh, uh, black's got, um, well, a couple of sets of double pawns, one extra pawn, uh, bishop against knight, but his bishop is pinned into the corner by the knight on g7 simply extraordinary and uh, i mean to be honest you know again i'm playing through this at massive speed but i was thinking this ma surely you know we've got a pass pawn here surely this is just going to be winning for white i mean uh, by the time the king goes over here to free the bishop surely we've we've um you know we've just destroyed white's position but actually it just seems to be a draw this position but i mean how the engines uh, at this sort of time control are assessing this is just simply defies belief so um, a4, king c6, king c3 from Leela, and king d5. So the king's just in time there. And um, yeah, just a little bit hard to know. That, that white doesn't really have enough tempi somehow. Uh, you've got to do something with your king. So f4 was played by uh, by Leela. And now king e4. Now there are other moves to, uh, to draw, but king e4 is pretty cool. f5, and now this amazing move from Torch, king f4. What's the point of it? The point is that after f6... You go king g5, f7, king h6, and after f8 queen, bishop g7 picks up the queen. That's the, the whole tactical uh, basis of this line. Let me just run through that again. King f4, f6, uh, not king c4, f6, king g5, f7, king h6, f8 queen, bishop g7 picks up the queen. I've never seen anything like this before. It's just totally new to me and totally wonderful. So after king c4, um, king g5 played so um, I mean basically you're just going there you've got to free your bishop and then Leela is in time to try and um, uh, bury this bishop with um, um, with the other pawn and um, the point is that if takes takes king g7 king d6 then this is actually winning for um, for uh, for white here so king h6 um, a5 b6 a6 king b8 king h7 yeah, the engines are not not doing their best here, but uh, they basically believe that this is um, just a total win for um, for uh, for White. So what um, Torch has to do, and what Tor Torch does, is just go ahead and um, win the uh, pawn. And uh, well, doing it in this way, um, your king's uh, one step further, and the the White King is one step back, and this makes the key difference. Um, you go King G5, H4, King G4, King G3, King G2. And uh, here the engines uh, agree to draw. If we just play it through, it's a5, h3, a6, h2, a7, h1. Exchange it off and then b4 and we are just in time there. And if you're being really good here, queen b7 and then queen takes h1 and we agree a draw. So there we are. What a fabulous little game this. Um, you know, it's just, uh, it's not only the wins that are uh, really impressive, but, you know, some of the draws um, are really quite amazing too. And uh, I like this opening because, um, yeah, it's better for white, but, you know, it's 
no, there is plenty of play in it for black it's one of those uh, really perfect openings and um yeah you know i i thought that uh, torch played very well out of the opening there but uh, yeah the way that um uh, that these things happen this unusual move h6 in this position and then this um, this lovely bit of counterplay from Torch, you know, just uh, finding a way not to defend passively, but to activate the pieces. And then, yeah, you know, how this position turned out, how Torch managed to hold it together, how Leela uh, blocks in, you know, all of White's pieces with a single knight on G7. You know, really quite amazing. And, uh, well, you know, the ending that resulted here, um, just uh, nah, never remotely seen anything like this. Quite astounding. And uh, of course, you know, the um, the tactic that's at the heart of it, really, you know, the idea that um, the black can go behind this marching, uh, oops, sorry, this marching uh, F pawn um, in order to fork the white king and queen, you know, at the end is just simply outstanding. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Um, yeah, it's a sort of, uh, it just shows, you know, how amazingly rich chess is, but it's not quite the thing you normally see in human games. You need that, uh, you know, the absolute brilliance of the engine sometimes to reveal these sort of possibilities. So there we are. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, um, you know, if you enjoyed it, then uh, why not uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, tell your friends, take a look at my new books, Silicon Road to Chess Improvement and Reengineering the Chess Classics on Forward Chess. Um, I'm the Forward Chess Author of the Month for uh, August, so uh, quite quite big reductions uh, on that. And Forward Chess is a really lovely way to uh, to play through uh, um, through these books. To be honest, um, well, you know, engine games played on uh, uh, played through on digital technology. I think that's uh, that's perfect. But the ability to um, to read through the text and then decide, oh, I want to look at some more uh, crazy variations from the engines or not. I just want to play through the main game. Very easy to do with Forward Chess, and uh, I think it reads absolutely perfectly kind of suits really uh, you know the way that I built up the books which is really you know I try and uh, have all the explanations possible in words and then you know some extra variations some engine games or whatever as the uh, extra bonus just to show all the, the amazing possibilities and uh, I think that works very well with uh, with forward chess so there we are and uh, otherwise you know thanks very much for watching and keep your eyes peeled for more Leela against Torch videos thanks for watching